life. The alleged victim, a Ball State freshman, has not yet made any formal charges. Ball State is trying to be the first Indiana State institution to support a new type of education. The Board of Trustees have passed an initiative to support Indiana charter schools. Charter schools are supported by education tax dollars. This type of teaching is intended to be more innovative and is set up by a contract. This new initiative would allow Ball State to issue charters to schools and to monitor their progress. Ball State claims this is just one way the Teachers College can support a significant and meaningful experimentation. The program is, if instated, will not be underway until 2003. A 911 call over the weekend led to a search of a rental truck in Evansville, Indiana. An Evansville rental company called police after they had, sus had suspicions about two men of Middle Eastern descent that stopped to rent a truck. The police then stopped the truck because they thought they were driving with illegal license plates. The police then discovered after searching the truck and calling in the plates that they were abiding the law. Police released the men several hours after the search. And a Muncie woman has been charged with leaving the scene of an accident for the second time. 42-year-old Teresa Bilray was charged with failure to stop after police found her brother 50 feet from the scene of the accident along Fuson Road. Bilbray was also charged with a hit and run in July of 2000. Coming up when we return, News Center at 530 continues. We'll have an explo explosion in Alabama and uh, more. When that's right. And we'll also have the latest on the recovery efforts in New York, so please stay tuned. In East Central Indiana, there is only one place to turn for local news. Left two million Serbian residents. Ball State has gained national news attention. News Center 43. America's top and rule seven. seven. We're okay on time now, guys. Clouds begin to fall. Muncie's only live TV newscast. Reporting live only, only live. 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 On Saturday as we go to the highlight. An official CNN Student Bureau. CNN Student Bureau. News Center 43, Monday through Thursday at 5.30 and 9.30 on Burr's Channel 43. An international coalition in the war against terrorism has gained a new measure of support. Russian President Vladimir Putin says his country is ready to supply weapons to anti-Taliban forces in Afghanistan. President Putin says also says that Russia has decided how it will aid the United States campaign against terrorism. The campaign goes as far as to exchange intelligence, but will not allow the U.S. military to use Russian Air Force bases. Osama bin Laden is calling on Muslims in Pakistan to fight against what he calls the American Crusade forces. The statement was signed by bin Laden and dated yesterday. It was delivered to a satellite channel in Qatar. In the statement, bin Laden reaffirms the re, in the statement, bin Laden reaffirms his solidarity with the Afghan people under the leadership of the Taliban and says they are on the path of the jihad or holy holiday or holy war. Bin Laden is believed. Bin Laden is believed to be hiding in Afghanistan. He often communicates with the outside world through the TV satellite channel. A steadfast rebel group in Afghanistan, the Northern Alliance, has stepped up its has, has stepped up its military campaign against the country's fueling Taliban. Chris Burns is monitoring the fighting in the mountains of the region of northern Afghanistan. After a heavy night of bombardment by Northern Alliance tanks against the Taliban, the alliance claims to have seized about three checkpoints in an area south of here, about 40 clicks, uh, kilometers south of here, and that's 30 kilometers north of the capital, Kabul. The Northern Alliance is uh, within range of taking Kabul, but they are still facing very fierce fighting by the Taliban. We, were, we watched from a mountaintop as we saw in a, in a no man's land valley, river valley between the two forces as they fought with artillery fire and machine gun fire. A Taliban jet flew overhead and dropped a bomb not far from our, the village where we were visiting just minutes before that. So the fighting does go on, and it does appear, however, uh, that uh, the, the, the Taliban are putting up a fight in that area. Uh, the, the Taliban um, are trying to seize those three checkpoints that the, that the Northern Alliance are claiming. A, we talked to one Northern Alliance commander who says that uh, they, they would hope to reach Kabul by winter, but they're going to need U.S. air power if they want to get it any sooner uh, than that. A Taliban threat has forced U.N. workers to halt their relief efforts. A UNICEF spokesman says the staff was threatened with execution if they 
execution if they used any of the banned electronic equipment in vehicles. The UN is one of the last providers of food and health care to the impoverished Afghans. Um, Afghans. Former st foreign staff were removed, at, removed after the September 11th terror attacks on America, but left behind Af but left behind were Afghan employees. The UN is advising its staff to obey the Taliban. President Bush spoke on a fight against terrorism earlier today. This time it wasn't about the military, but a financial speech. President Bush is calling on foreign banks to join the U.S. in freezing the assets of 27 individuals and organizations that are linked to terrorism. As the world's major religions come together against terrorism, Pope John Paul II has also offered the support for retaliation. CNN's Jim Bitterman followed the head of the Roman Catholic Church to, to, during his visit to Kazakhstan. Before a largely Muslim audience of Kazakhstan's scientists and academics, Pope John Paul II denounced in the clearest terms yet those who use Islam to justify murderous acts. Recalling errors of the recent past, John Paul said, all believers should unite so that God is never held hostage to ambitions. Hatred, fanaticism, and terrorism profane the name of God and disfigure the true image of man. And on the question of what to do about terrorism, a Vatican official was even stronger, lending support to the American intention to bring terrorists to justice. According to papal spokesman Joaquin Navarro Valls, the Vatican would prefer a nonviolent approach, but would understand if Washington resorted to violence. You have the right, he was quoted as saying, to use self-defense for the society you lead, even if the means may be aggressive. And there was also support for Washington from the Pope's host, the President of Kazakhstan. He told CNN that he has already opened the country's airspace and would give infrastructure report to military forces fighting terrorism. But he said no concrete plans have been worked out so far. We said that we will provide the cooperation in the struggle against terrorism. And as we said that, we have to be ready for real actions. The Pope scheduled his trip to Kazakhstan months ago for mostly religious reasons. But now, as tensions have built in the region in the wake of the attacks on the U.S., his moral authority is no doubt being welcomed by Christians and non-Christians here and elsewhere. Jim Bitterman, CNN, Astana, Kazakhstan. Rescue workers started off the week doing more of the same, unloading crumbled concrete from the World Trade Center. New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani says the chance of finding anyone alive in the rubble would now be a miracle. 6,453 remain missing. Giuliana, Giuliani also says it will take nearly six months to remove most of the wreckage from the disaster site. Two newspapers are reporting a possible link between the suspects in the terror attacks and crop dusting planes. The reports say that three Middle Eastern men had inquired about such planes in Florida. Investigators believe one of the men was one of the suicide hijackers. An explosion at an Alabama coal mine killed at least three miners Sunday evening. A spokesman for the owner of the mine, Jim Walter Resources, says sparks from a battery generator ignited a pocket of methane gas that caused the explosion. Tears are being shed today in the Alabama community of Brookwood, where the families of nine coal miners are awaiting word on their fate. The nine are missing and presumed dead. Shauna Walters joins us now, and we can pretty much say goodbye to summer. Yes, pretty much. Um, today's weather will continue to be a little chilly, and tonight um, it will be chilly all the way throughout the end of the week. Okay, you'll have more coming right yes, up I will. after this. And now a look at today's weather almanac. Today's high is in the 58. Um, normal high is 73 degrees. Today's low is 50 degrees. And that's pretty close to the normal low of 52 degrees. Sunrise is at 632 a.m. and sunset is at 635 p.m. And today's highs, as you can see, up in the north at South Bend is 57 degrees. As we come down at Fort, Fort Wayne, it would be 56 degrees. Muncie at 58 degrees. Lafayette would be at high of 59 degrees. Um, Indianapolis would be 63. Terre Haute at 62. And Evansville at 63 degrees at high. Look at today's current conditions. Cloudy, a temperature of 55 degrees. Winds are at north at 14 miles per hour, and the humidity is 59%. And now look at today's national satellite. Um, we have a cold front coming in, um, pushing out actually from 
off the East Coast, and that was the bad weather you were seeing all week. And a look at our national radar, we see that um, it's just very cloudy in the Indiana area. Um, so you'll, you'll see clouds in Muncie and through Indianapolis. It's moving out away from Illinois um, towards our East Coast. And tonight we have also a cold front along the East Coast still coming on. Um, heavy rains will be down to the south, um, pushing over onto the East Coast. And a look at tonight's weather. We have decreasing clouds, a low of 40 degrees with winds at north 8 miles per hour. And tomorrow morning we'll have partly cloudy. We'll have a little bit more sun, temperature at 55 degrees, and the winds will be north at 5 miles per hour. And tomorrow, we will have, um, again, we will have a, the cold front just keep on here, but it will be pushing out more. We won't see much of that um, nasty weather that we've been seeing lately, but it will be um, becoming more sunny and everything. It will be pushing out. Um, rains are still in the south. And tomorrow, we are port partly cloudy at high of 60 degrees, winds northwest at 10 miles per hour. And a now look at our three-day outlook. We have a high on Wednesday at 70 degrees. On Thursday, we have a high of 73 degrees. And Friday, a high of 72 degrees. Um, all of our lows Wednesday, Wednesday through Friday will be in the 50s. It is incredibly cold tomorrow. I don't know if I yes, can deal with that. Is. Yes, it is. But it will be getting nice throughout the week. Good. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Justin Herbert joins us now for a look at sports. That's right, Justin. We're going to have an in-depth look at the Ball State football game this weekend. So stick around. Sports is next. The Ball State football Cardinals took the field this Saturday against Northern Iowa, trying to avoid an 0-3 start for the third straight season. Little did they know that Northern Iowa kicker Mackenzie Holmbrecker would be a homewrecker. It was a shootout at Ball State Stadium, and it was obvious early that these two, that the team who had the ball last was going to win. To the highlights we go as the Cardinals enter, enter from the middle of their newly renovated stadium for the first time. The Cardinals would strike first, a nice fake reverse, and then a nice game of a catch between Talmadge Hill and Michael Westbrook. Cards up 7-0. Then turnovers, though, were a big factor for the Cardinals. Scott Blair fumbles here, and this would lead to a Panther score. Northern Iowa getting it done through the air here as we see Tom Petrie as he passes to Jake Soliday and UNI takes a 17-12 lead. Ball State had over 500 yards total offense. Here we have Talmadge Hill throwing an interception. And that would lead to another BSU score or another UNI score as he finds Marlis Mays for the 23-yard catch. But Ball State would come back and top off the 68-yard drive with a 9-yard scamper from Scott Blair. And then you need to turn your head here if you're squeamish because Michael Westbrook gets his leg broken severely and he will be out for the season. That's a tough one there. And Ball State going to pour it on here as Hill finds Billy Lynch, who had 10 yards, or 10 catches for 120 yards. Ball State up 25-24 at the break. Now in the third quarter, Scott Blair is going to take over. You think he's down, but he's not. He's got a 23-yard run. That would take him down to the one-yard line. And this would set up this play for Talmadge Hill. Fumbles the ball, finds his way outside. Then presses the square button on his PlayStation 2 and dives into the end zone. Ball State now up 32-24, but then more mistakes. As Ball State fumbles and Darian Bruntley comes in for the score, it's now tied at 32. Here is a nice play by the Jason Teeters, the Yorktown grad who puts Ball State up 39-32, but the Panthers would come right back as Richard Carter comes in for a one-yard score. Now it's 39-39. Then, the blocked field goal. And Ball State had a chance to put it away there and couldn't get it done. 
And then in the final second, McKenzie, home wrecker, home breaker, puts it through. And Northern Iowa goes on to win 42 to 39. Moving on now, on a brighter note, the Ball State women's volleyball team was in action this weekend, first Friday versus Northern Illinois, and Megan Hammonds needed just two kills to become BSU's all-time leader in that category. In one game, she broke it with this, with this kill and helped Ball State win that game and the match 3-0. After the match, we caught up with Megan, who was a little speechless. and beat the record when I was a freshman, I thought, wow, that would be amazing to be able to do something like that. So for me to come in and beat something that I thought was so amazing, it just, it's a great feeling. Talk a little bit about tonight, uh, beginning of, before the match. Uh, it was more of the same from the Cards as they extended their home match winning streak to 17. But it wasn't an easy task as Toledo to proved to be a tougher opponent than BSU had bargained for. BSU went on to win. 30-27, 30-23, And as the new senator, new center sports department is an equal opportunity reporter of all BSU sports, it is my honor and privilege to tell you in the form of a graphic that the Ball State women's soccer team defeated the Crusaders of Valpo Sunday afternoon 5-0 at soccer field. The team defeated Eastern Michigan Friday in double OT, and the field hockey team was also victorious as they beat Miami of Ohio 7-0. However, they lost their battle of the Cardinals to Louisville 3-0 on Friday. The Ball State men's basketball schedule has been released, and the Cards are heading for Hawaii for the Maui Invitational, where it's not going to be all fun and games and sipping out of coconuts. Their first game will be against national powerhouse Kansas. Other notables on the schedule include the Hoosiers on December 8th and Oklahoma State on the 20, December 29th, and the cards begin MAC play against Kent on January 2nd. And the playoff race is heating up in baseball. Here's a look at tonight's important games. The Giants are at the Dodgers. They trail the Diamondbacks by two games. Bonds needs four home runs to tie Big Mac. The Cardinals are at the Astros, and the Braves, who are hanging on to the East Division by a lead of a half game, take on the fish in Florida. Good to see that you're an equal opportunity sports coverage there. <laughs> because I'm glad to see that, Justin. Yes, we want to take care of everybody. Else. That's right, that's right. Full coverage tonight. Coming up on News Center at 5.30, we'll have more for you on what's coming up at 9.30. That's right, and also Shauna Walters will join us for a weather recap. That'll be coming up right after this. And Shauna, tomorrow when we wake up, it's going to be a lot like today, isn't that right? Yes, pretty much. Tonight, it's going to be decreasing clouds with a low of 40 degrees. Um, tomorrow, it's going to be partly cloudy with a high of 60. And with a three-day lookout, we see um, Wednesday will be a high of 70 with a low of 51. Thursday, a high of 73 with a low of 52. And Friday will be sunny with a high of 72 and a low of 43 degrees. Gets a little better. All right. Yes. Thank you. Coming up on News Center at 930, we'll have more on the Eli Lilly's grant to Ball State's Communication Department, which is meant to enhance the digital communication program on campus. Join us for this story and more tonight at 930. Well, thank you for joining us for News Center at 530. And I'm Mandy Vandegriff. News Center 43 is an official CNN Student Bureau. Be sure to tune in tonight for News Center at 930.